wonderful people and welcome to a new review. Today we are going to review the Sonnet watercolors. They are made by Nevska Palitra. This is the same brand that creates the White Knights watercolors. The White Knights watercolors are the artist range of the watercolors that they create. And Sonnet is the student grade line from the same brand. You can see they come in this wonderful yellow tin and actually that that is the reason why I bought, bought them because I really love this yellow bright color it looks happy and wonderful and when I open them um, of course there's this little um, sheet that says that they were controlled they come in this box it's very nice package they have not a swatching sheet made of paper, but a one made from plastic with already printed on colors and color names that I have kept in the palette. The pens are the same size as they are in the White Knights. The tin has the same layout with this three rows of colors, no place for brushes, which I actually prefer. And there's no flap that opens to the other side, which is totally okay with me because I use the lid for the mixing space. If you want um, more mixing space, this path might not be for you, but for me it's totally okay. Just wanted to show you that and mention it a, bit, a little bit. The paints were a little bit wonky, but you can actually fix it when you bend um, these railings a little bit and the colors and the set are Zinc White, Hansa Lemon, Yellow Medium, Yellow Deep, Gold Ochre, Orange, Red Light, Carmine, Meadow Lake Red, Azure, Ultramarine Light, Blue, Bluish Green, Violet Light, Violet Deep, Emerald Green, Sap Green, Green Deep, Burnt Sienna, Burnt Umber and Lamp Black. So there you can see me explore the palette a little bit. I have taken a look. There's a loop, loop on the bottom for the thumb. It's actually nicely done. My palette had a little scratch on the, on the bottom, but I actually don't mind it. Um, it was fine otherwise. So what does Nevska Palitra, and yeah, I'm pronouncing it in Russian, say about these paints? They say that these are student group great paints and made for beginners who just start out with the medium. They s give no information on the bind binder actually, I was really researching it and I will speak about the paints and my research a little bit while you watch me paint this toucan um, for the testing because I believe it actually helps um, to see how the paints behave on paper. I used a 100% cotton paper for the swatches and all of the tests you can will see some scans in the end um, and also a mixing chart too and i used the da vinci casaneo brushes for the painting they are amongst my favorites recently but today it's all about the sonnet watercolors so nevska palitra says about the binder that it's a synthetic binder and gives no other information what may be contained in these colors. I know the White Knights use gum arabic and honey for the binder and solution etc. But these ones seem not to do that, though they react very similarly to the White Knights. So they left me a little bit confused. And that's why in the watercolor database I have added um, unknown as the information for the binder because I have no confirmed uh, information what is actually in these paints. They also say that they have used less expensive pigments for these paints um, and not the same ones as for the White Knights range, which explains why these ones are a little bit cheaper than the White Knights ones. And also, and they are very transparent about it, they say that they use a little bit of fillers and more binder in these paints, so that's what's explaining the lower price. But it's expected, expected from student grade paints and other brands do the same actually, and that's why the prices are different. 
they say they use no cadmiums or cobalts, but cheaper organic pigments instead. They use more binder, more filler, etc. And they say they have a balanced range um, with the most popular colors. And I have to agree that they have very nice col colors in the range. The Sonnet range only has 24 colors. In this set there are 21, so three are missing and it's raw sienna with the pigments PBR7, English red with the pigment PR101 and sepia with a mix of pig pigments PR102, PR187 and PBK7. In this set there's a lamp black, which is actually not a PBK6, but is a mix of three different colors, which I found um, a bit weird because why call it lamp black when it's not lamp black? It could have been called like a neutral black and no one would worry about a pigment mix um, being in there. So this was some this was this was just a little bit confusing for me. Out of these 21 colors in the set, only four are mixed ones and the others are single pigment ones. Out of these 21 colors, 11 are considered light fast, 7 are fairly light fast and 3 not light fast at all at all and have only one star in their their three star rating. I expect these pigments to fade very quickly. As you know, I do light fastness tests with all of my colors there in the Sun and Colors database. It's linked down below, so you can check them out. And the results will be there in about four months. When I tested them, most of these paints were transparent, semi-transparent. -transpa Some were opaque, especially like amongst the yellows and this weird sap green that they have. It's just a weird mix um, and I'm not a person who likes these weird green convenient mixes. Most of the paints were staining, which might be an issue for someone who likes to lift a lot uh, or use it, uh, is it as te a technique. But there are tricks how to make um, staining colors easy to lift. I want to make a video on that too if you want, don't know this trick yet. It's actually pretty neat and so this set could work for those but with a little bit more tricks used but it's great for those who liked to layer a lot um, the moving was decent I, I compared it to other brands as core and schminke and Daniel Smith and um, yeah, dispersion is something that's influenced by the pigment used, by the binder used, etc. So it's like not flowing super fast, but it's decent. They did work. Um, what I encountered was a little bit of shine in the mass tone when they dried on the paper. And this can be an issue when your painting is not completely matte, but there are some shininess seen. Uh, like in the finished piece let's be fair these are colors that are on the cheaper side they're intended for students for training for learning and for that audience they work well the variety of the colors is actually nice in the end you will see a mixing chart that i've created and you can also see all of these charts and swatch sheets on coffee it's all linked down below and you will see that you can create a very wide variety of color mixes if you use these paints the only thing that i was left with was the binder mystery and i will try to contact them and see what the company itself will say about this so i leave you with final thoughts on this palette. Let's share some final thoughts about the Sonnet palette. The tin is wonderful, I like it a lot, though mine had a little scratch when it arrived already. 
it has no sharp edges and it doesn't have the flap that opens here as most of the thins have though this size different than other thins of this size uh, it fits three rows of seven um, white knights full pants which are a little bit smaller um, than the normal full pants are like a little bit um, not as long and it doesn't have a place for the brush which I actually prefer I like this kind of palettes I also like it and this is my personal taste that it doesn't have this flap that opens here in comparison this is what a normal palette would look like and it does have this flap which well not only always hangs down like that, like that but I actually prefer not to have it and it has this place for a brush and I cram some more um, paints in there it's exactly the same same length it's a little less thicker than the other one but it's actually just as wide so it's almost the same size I'll put this to the side. So this palette actually makes me happy. When it comes to the color selection, I think it's okay. Um, it comes with this swatching sheet of plastic. I would have preferred um, watercolor paper and I actually will make one from paper. And so let's take a look at the swatches and remove the down to hair. So, if you compare this printed sheet or like transparent plastic, you can see that um, not all colors are 100% right, especially here in the reds as well as here in these two. You can see huge differences in hue to the printed version. And that's why I would recommend to swatch it on a piece of paper and cut it the size and put it in a palette instead of this sheet. But it's nice that it has um, information, though it doesn't have light fastness. Uh, it does have light fastness inter information. It's marked with stars. It doesn't have pigment information here. But I have done a little bit of research and you can find all of the colors on the Sun Colors dot com watercolor database with all swatches and pigments and everything and you can find all of the sheets I will show you as a scanned version on Kofi in the gallery as well as on the blog post where I have a written review of this set. The color selection is actually nice. I really like that the colors are different in hue from each other so you have a wider variety for mixing, etc. You have four yellows, which are all very different from each other. I really like this gold ochre. I don't know why, but it's to me a very beautiful color. I actually have used all of them while, while I painted. I think, and this is rare, that I used um, almost all of them. Well, I did, um, yeah, some swatching and scribbling and painting, which I actually like. I use this vial deep a lot, though, and I'm really sorry. This one and this one, they are very beautiful in color, but they are not um, very light fast. Yeah, same pigments are in the White Knights. Um, range 2 but they will I think this is the pigment that will remove from the what nights range I will make a video on that um, so you know what is changing and if you like to get those colors you can get them still so let's talk about this in the swatch and I will put it uh, like a scanned version so you don't see me fiddling with it 
but you can see here the swatches with the mast on top and it feathering out um, in a more water watery version on the bottom. <clears throat> on the left side you can see um, the glazing, how it glazes and the colors glaze very nicely. Um, I didn't have any issues with that actually. None of them mix too much or move the color beneath a lot. Like they will actually do that. Um, many of the colors were staining on the right side. You can see or not see a lot of um, lifting. I really tried. I had a firm brush and um, for some I really did scrub it. But you see that most of the colors are staining that are on the set. On the black line that I've added to the sheet you can see how opaque the colors are and indeed Especially on the top row, I can see a change or that they are all pretty, well, semi-opaque. I would say semi-opaque. You can see more opaqueness in the glaze. The red light is actually very nice and I feel it's a transparent one. You can see that the ultramarine is covering the black um, light a bit, the bluish green does a little tiny little bit. On the bottom row, it's the sap green, burnt sienna, burnt umber. But it's actually a little bit ex expected that the yellow colors are a little bit um, more opaque. You can see it also in the palette itself that those colors that are really, really dark and deep are more transparent usually. Than the ones that are really light, like let's say this sap green, which has a weird hue. Like sap green is a, is, is a color that I really like in general, but there are hues that I just can't stand, and this is a color I don't like a lot. I have an issue with the some of the greens. The emerald green and the green deep are actually very nice colors. I like these both. But instead of sap, sap green, I wish I, there was like a green gold or something, which for me personally is nicer to use. With the gold ochre, burnt sienna and burnt umber, there are three useful and very nice browns um, slash yellows in there. There's, there are three reds, three greens, some convenience colors with orange. Um, like this turquoise color and the purples and yeah, I think it's a nice set. The whole range has 24 colors. In this set there are 21, so there are three colors from the whole range missing. And I, I kind of wish they wouldn't include the zinc white or the lamp black. Like, I don't mind the black as much as the white because it's a fairly transparent white and this is something that's not very useful I feel when painting in like traditional watercolor but well um, many sets to include these what I did after was a little dispersion test and here you can see how they move I've covered a part um, the paper in uh, with clear water and then three dots on them um, the white I had to make it black so we can actually see the white moves a little bit. The Hansa yellow does actually move. It was only one dot. That's how I started. I wasn't sure how to make this test. The yellow medium no, wasn't moving that much. The yellow deep did move a little bit. <laughs> Gold ochre just went everywhere and it's very light because it spread so much. The orange, um, yeah, it moved all to one place. So uh, these ones, what is nicely seen that the vi vi violet light actually 
separates a little bit into a nice violet and like a pinkish tone. Um, I believe it's a one pigment, pigment color, so it's actually pretty neat to see. It's um, PV2. It's a sing single pigment and it's actually nice to see that a single pigment does that. The Violet Deep was kind of a little bit hesitant to move. Um, the Sap Green too, because I, I believe it has some like heavier pigments. It's PG7 and PY3. The Green Deep it's, is at PG8. This is Burnt Sienna. PBR7. It's not moving a lot in other brands too. Uh, for comparison I have here a... I think it's it was a burnt umber actually here um, by Schminke that wasn't moving much. In comparison this is the Sonnet one. This is a DS Daniel Smith color. It's I think it was a Thalo Turquoise. This is again Schminke with, I think this was PB15 that I wanted to use just in comparison because Azure, this color is PB15 by uh, Niewska Palitra. So I wanted to see and compare how they would move and I think it's actually comparable. And these ones were core. Um, I actually don't know. I don't have many of the core colors. This was a cobalt turquoise. As expected, it, di it didn't move much. Though it is core and I know the binder is made to make paints moving a lot. But it's always a combination of binder plus uh, pigment that makes the paints move or not. So this is hopefully um, something that helps you to see how much or little the paints do move and if you're not sure you can still watch the process video of the painting where you can see how the paints move and layer etc like in the real environment I think it's helpful to see how paints actually behave in a real painting instead of just watching and I find this very helpful for me personally so this is what I add to my videos. Here you can see again how they look. This can is available on coffee, link down below. Then <laughs> I made a mixing chart just to see what possibilities this palette gives me. I think it's helpful too to see what you can and can't do with the color. And as always, here in the middle are the colors as they are. The lower half, half is leaning towards one color, um, the upper half, half is leaning towards the other color. So you have a variety of hues that you can see. I actually like the mixes with white. They are very pastel and very nice, but as mentioned not very useful, useful for me personally. What I really really enjoyed was the wide variety of mixes that were possible like here in the yellows and the reds, oranges you have a very nice greens that are mixable not only with the blues but also with the greens you get like more neon colored but also some earthier colors if you wish um, you get some nice browns in a wider variety. You get nice reddish browns or deep reds if you mix some of the colors like this violet with the reds just was beautiful. Like these colors are gorgeous. You have very nice turquoise colors. You have um, a wide variety of purples if you like so and a huge block of very beautiful neutrals. So I really enjoyed this. Uh, this palette <laughs> and this mixing chart, it took me hours but it made me actually really really happy. Yeah, here you can see that I swatched them a little bit and tested for light, uh, not light fastness. This test is coming soon and the updates will be there in about four months. 
so yeah for transparency and it was actually very nice um, yeah there's some some mixes that made me pretty pretty happy um, something that I realized and I did it while painting too and I think I don't know yeah you can see it like a little bit especially in these reds and this orange that in the mass tone they tend to have a slightly shiny um, surface. I think it's because there there's more binder in these than there is in the White Knights, who um, for the most part are uh, matte when they dry, but this is something I encountered in professional brands as Schminke too. Um, just the mass tone, there's sometimes like a sheen on the paper, it can happen, but it's not very desirable for some, and that's why I'm mentioning it. Of course, this is a student grade paint. Uh, this set was, I don't know, I think 25 or 27 euros when I purchased it. And I will link it down below as well, <clears throat> if you're curious. It's made for someone who... Um, starts out with watercolor maybe once some nicer paints than the school paints and they give like a lot of paint for a decent price and I think for student grade paints they are actually nice. I had no issues with this palette at all like sometimes there are palettes that I struggle with because the paints are weird or the color selection etc these ones I did not struggle with them at all. Um, I am used to White Knights. I have used them a lot. White Knights is not my main palette, but I do use them. I had no issues with that. I can show you two of the paintings that I've actually made with this paint. And this one you have already seen on my channel. This is um, that I made made for a channel. channel uh, for a challenge and here you can see in the red too there is like like a slight shine um, on the red the gold is not from the white knights or this is um, a fine tech gold but you can also see the layering in the process itself you can also watch the layering it does layer very nicely in the skull you can see it too so this made me really happy and the process of today's video is <laughs> this one and this made me even more happy because I just love um, painting animals. So you can see it's fairly transparent that you can see still see um, the pencil lines there and here as well which I actually don't mind. It was very nice to mix. I mixed this black with the violet deep and burnt umber and it looks like beautiful. I used um, burnt umber and I think ultramarine for this bluish for the feet. I had a variety of browns here in the branch I used again Violet Deep for the dark shadow. It's not a light first color, so if I was to hang it up, it probably will fade over time. But I might still do that just to see how much colors actually fade when not hanging in the light. I really, really enjoy that. There was just a teeny tiny bit of the lamp black used, um, like here around the eye, for the um, last bit. All of the other darks were mixed otherwise and it's still like pretty dark as you can see. I used some of the white here in the area and here you too can see that the red is actually pretty opaque. The camera doesn't catch it that well but you can see the red here in this part. I hope the process is helpful for you just to see how the colors behave. I hope all of the scans are helpful for you um, to decide whether this is a set for you or maybe for um, your nieces or nephews who start out with art or your kids. Um, that's something 
we have to think about too that um, yeah there there is a younger generation who starts out with art um, and this set actually made me happy I felt the same about the Van Gogh paints to be honest they made me really happy too and I think it's personal choice which one to use um, the cutments are more difficult to use to be honest they don't reread as nicely as these ones do and I hope you get to take a look at the swatches on suncolors.com if you like um, soon the light fastness results will be online I announce it um, on Instagram on the, which I will link here as well so you can check out if these are news that you want to have. So if you're curious and want to take a look um, at the swatches and the mixing chart, check out Kofi. You don't have to tip me, as mentioned, to have access to all the info. It's on Colors database. There's no hidden anything. The results of the light fastness test will come soon. I want to improve my content and if there's something you are curious about that I can include in the reviews like a certain test or anything please let a comment down below I would love to give you all the info that you seek for the colors that you need or want so you can make the best choices have a wonderful day hope to see you soon bye